I fancy Florida than myself. We could all go. Take everyone to see Mickey. You sure we want to take the kids on our honeymoon? Yeah, be brill. Like a new star for all of us. Can't go to Disney, not take the kids. Well, why don't we go somewhere they won't fancy? Mm, Africa. Oh, a safari. Dead romantic. Alison, will you tell your mum that you fancy going to Disney with us? Hey, there's not many kids can say they've been on their own mum's honeymoon. I think I fancy Disney, really. It's just for kids. Ah, don't be a killjoy. No long faces in this house. No one has a wedding round the corner. I hope you're going to look cheerful at this wedding. We don't want any of the photos spoiled. Hey, she's a bridesmaid. Of course she'd be cheerful and beautiful, just like her mum. Do I have to be a bridesmaid? Well, Katie's going to be one. You knew that we'd want you as well. I don't want to think about it now. I'm taking this next door to share Mr. Crosby. Well, I hope you're not bothering him again. There's an article in here all about a new computer. And Sarah from school's got one just the same. Dad bought it for her last week. It's boss. That's all right, I suppose, if you've got computer money. She's got a modem for it as well. A what? Links to the telephone system so the PCs can talk to each other. I hope she's not as that computer I can lie. You can get locked up for that. She got it to help with the schoolwork. Her parents wanted to do well. Optimize the poor Mr. Crosby again. And she's still against this wedding. Maybe if I can hit on the right way of getting through to her. Well, where are you going now? Oh, didn't I say, uh, I want to pop into town and get a few things. I might get a haircut as well. This one. Oh. <laughs> Mick. Yeah? I need your thoughts on something. About my new job. Things aren't going as well as I'd hoped and... Well, I'm thinking of leaving. Serious? I am. I don't understand. I mean, when you started this job, you were over the moon about it. Well, you know how it is. You start a job with all these expectations, and this one didn't live up to them, that's all. I know, but, uh, is that any reason to pack it in? Well, why hang around? It won't improve. Well, how do you know? What about Charles? What about him? Well, can't you go direct to him? If it's not working out, just tell him why. Get him to sort it for you. I don't think you know Charles very well. He's so wrapped up in his own career, he wouldn't smooth the path for me. Of course he would. He likes you. I mean, it's obvious. But you don't really know him. What he's like to work with. Well, I think I know him now. Oh, he's all right. I admire the man. Well, he sorted out this football coaching for me, didn't he? Look, I'm the equality officer, but it feels just like a token job. I may suggest all kinds of things, but I know they'll never get acted on. Well, then, fight to see that they do. That's the woman I know and love. She wouldn't give in. She'd get stuck in there. Oh, Mick. It's not that easy. Hey, I'm right, and you know I am. I mean, how can you give up one job before you've got another one lined up? Just think about it. Yeah. Go on. You'll be late for your coaching. All yeah, right. Have a nice time with the kids. Yeah. And hey, think. Don't make any rest decisions. Just give it time. Mm -hmm. See you later. Great to have a room of my own again. Mike's a right slob. Yeah, I had noticed, funnily enough. We'll make yourself comfortable. I don't think Anna's gonna be coming back. Yeah, strange one, that one there. Moving in with that fella from the petrol station. Yeah, it was a bit quick. I thought she was happy here. Yeah, well, it was only ever temporary, and I've still got to sell the place, remember? You take your time, mate. I don't fancy being homeless, and I definitely don't want to go back to me mum and dad's. Yeah, well, I wouldn't get too settled if I were you. I'm not really sure if I'm sticking around here myself at the moment. Oh, hey. Eh? You're not getting off, are you? No. <laughs> just, you know, I can't see myself living around here forever. And this stuff with Diana and the trial, it just won't go away. Not Jimmy Corkle again. <laughs> he was round here the other day, snooping around the house. You mean Jimmy was actually in here? Yeah, pretending to be a buyer. He got the estate agents let him in. What was the point? It was a scare me. To show me how easily it could be done, you know, I can break in at any time. That was the message, loud and clear. Hey, I don't like the sound of this. I mean, I live here too. I could be in. Well, any of us could. I wouldn't worry about it if I was you. He hasn't got anything against you, has he? But it's getting out of hand. I was debating whether I should get the police involved. That's a bit heavy, isn't it? Yeah. And can't be sure it'll work. It might just make things worse. So what's the alternative? Solicitors. Send him a formal letter telling him to keep away. Might be a hundred quid down the drain, but I've got to do something. 
An hundred quid? You could pay to have him kneecapped for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sing to his level, even if I am tempted. Like I said, I've got to do something. He won't let me forget Diana. He won't leave me alone. <sighs> I mean, if he doesn't, I just can't go forward and get on with my life, can I? Man move, otherwise the goal won't count. Now I keep telling you this, but you're not listening to me. You know what I have to do to get through to you, eh? You could always try throwing your weight around, as usual. Sorry, I don't think we've met. No. Does lot know me? Don't you, lads? Yep. Yes. They've met me more than once. Maybe someone could uh, share the joke. Oh, you can have a laugh at this. It's a bill for repairs, for the damage you did to our Gary's ghetto blaster. Oh, I see. And you must be Gary's what, uh, his big sister? Oh, that's good, that is. But not good enough. And Mrs. Salter, his mother. I'm sorry, love, I'm in the middle of coaching right now. They're used to me, they won't mind. And I've not come here to be fobbed off. OK, boys, back to the exercises. Eh? Passing skills, you know what to do, so just carry on. There, you see. You can get your point across. You don't have to act the bully all the time. Come on, Mr Salter, give us a chance. You're treating them like decent human beings. Why can't you do the same to my Gary? It's all very well for Peter. He gets off to work each day. I'm in the house a lot until term starts. Jimmy Corkle could come and have a poke at me. I'm sorry to hear that Peter has problems, but you know, I don't live there anymore. Hi. Hi. Hiya. Your pizza's there. Thanks. There you go. How's the babysitting going? Amazing. They've got their pyjamas on. I can see a point where they might even get into bed. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. Um, you wouldn't like to keep me company, would you? Unless you're eating with Terry. No, Terry's out. Yes, I'd like that very much, if it's OK. <laughs> Come through. Go on up. I'll just collect some drinks. At last, someone of my own age to communicate with. Well, I might see if I can't revive some of my old nannying skills, see if I can get them into the bedroom. <laughs> well, are you going to pay for it or what? Look, the thing got broke by accident. I asked your boy to turn the volume down, he just ignored me. He likes to train to his music, that's why. Well, it's not his gym, love. I mean, he may have talent, but he doesn't own the place. I suppose you've got a downer on him, too. The whole world's got a down on Gary, and for the life of me, I don't know why. Maybe your son provokes it. OK, now, come on, boys, keep it down, eh? Don't just mess about. Are you saying it's his fault? Because that isn't true. Mrs. Salter, I run the football team, and they have to be my prime concern. I should be with them now. You went for him the other night. You don't deny that, do you? No, I didn't go for him. I had to restrain him for the sake of the other kids. <gasps> you picked on him. Oh, no, it was the other way around. He wanted to pick a fight with me. But you're the grown-up, aren't you? You have a responsibility not to throw your weight around. Smashing his radio was wrong. That's why I want that money. Look, Mrs. Salter, I regret what happened the other night, but I can't pay for the repair. Now, I'm sorry, I have to get back to the team. Excuse me. That's right, run away. You've got nothing to say. You, you're the same as all the rest. I've gone out of my way to be fair to your boy. Well, that's crap. Hey, look, I've told you, if you don't want to work, then don't come. Hey, don't take it out on them. They've done nothing, have they? Picked on, just like my Gary. <sighs> Thomas asked me before when Daddy was coming home. Well, Max is back next week, so Thomas can have Daddy all to himself for two weeks while we're in Oxford. It must be awful for him, keep being passed backwards and forwards. Don't I know it, eh? Guilt. Hiya. Do you need a hand? Oh, no, oh, you're yeah, right. that would be... <laughs> I was wondering, um, I know it's a bit short notice, but there's a really good band on in town tonight. I wondered if you'd like to go with me. Oh, sorry, I can't. I'm babysitting for Patricia. Oh, no, listen, I can rearrange my evening if that'd help. No, you've already arranged it. OK, only offering. Yeah, well... Another time, maybe? Yeah, thanks anyway. See ya. See ya. There you are. You're in the way there. Go on, run into the kitchen. You can help us unpack there. I thought your date with Brian was all arranged and everything. Yeah, it is, but I don't know. Maybe I should stay in with Thomas. 
You're only going on a date with him. You're not getting married or anything. No, I'm still married to Max, aren't I? Just... I shouldn't stop you enjoying yourself. Message received and understood, but I'm allowed to feel a bit guilty, aren't I? I'm just a bit nervous. Do it. I think I just needed someone to say that to me. Margaret, can I ask a favour? See, when Max gets back next week, I'd kind of like to be here. I don't like the idea of poor Thomas just being collected from Mum and Dad's. Well, I thought we had to start in Oxford on Monday. Yeah, Max doesn't get back till Wednesday. That's the favour. Could you go down to Oxford by yourself for a couple of days? I mean, I'll follow on and you could just set up the office and things. Yeah, OK, no oh, problem. Brilliant, fine. disciplinary action. Do you can't let him get away with that, even if he is your boss? Well, no, I can't, but it's hard to know what to do. What does Mick say? I haven't told him yet. I'd like to sort it out myself. I don't want to be seen as some bimbo that goes running to a man at the first sign of trouble. And you know what they're like. As soon as they think someone's muscling in on their territory, it's fists flying. Sounds like this Charles character deserves that. Yeah, but then Mick takes it out of my hands and it just creates more problems. But do you really want to give up your job just because of some creep who can't keep his hands to himself? I don't know. Maybe I should just stick it out. Put up with it, only learn how to handle it better. How? Well, I probably overreacted. I mean, it's not as if he attacked me, is it? No, but it's all the snide things. That's what makes it so horrible. But however horrible it is, I should try and ignore it. I should, shouldn't I? Yes. Yes, you do that. Then he'll start to touch you even more, because he wants you in his power. That's what it's all about. Power. Control. I know what you're saying, No, but... there are no buts about it. It's up to you. Why should he have to be the one who has the power? Why can't you be the one who says what happens? It is possible, I know. Men don't always have to have the final word. Look, it's late. I better go. I'm not sure what power I have. I mean, he's my boss. You know what he is. Expose him. Save someone else going through the same thing. What is it? It's a surprise for you. Now, I know you've had a tough time lately. A few changes to get used to, but I thought you deserved a present. Oh, you've got me a computer? Hey, I can take it in, you know. Years of practice with our Katie. It's the one you were on about, the same as your mates. What's this? A surprise for our Alison. And for me, too. He's got me a computer, Mum. Can I unpack it now? Well, uh, I don't want to upset you, love, but I think Frank might have made a mistake. Oh, what's all right, I have. They said I could change you. I kept the receipt. Good. Well, in that case, you can probably take it back as well. Oh, Mum! Alison, go on up to bed, love. I just want to have a talk with Frank. Then I'll come up and see you. Lynn. Look, let's talk about it, eh? When's Max due back from his business trip? Uh, next week, and then I'm in Oxford for a couple of weeks working on the new charity account. You come together only to part. Yeah, we're hardly a coming together, more of a handing over of time. Do you mind me asking why you split? Oh, you know, things weren't working out. Maybe if you tried again. No, it's over between us. I see, because I wouldn't want to you know, pitch in where it might be a bit awkward. Yeah, have a good time. Mm. Great, thanks. I just popped down for a glass of milk. Um, just made a pot of coffee. Just... Oh, no, it's OK. I'm watching a film upstairs. Mm. All right, right, leave me to it. <laughs> Very diplomatic. Yeah, I remember when I was 16, I had a boyfriend who my mum really liked. He was dead nice and respectable. She'd always make us a cup of tea and then bundle herself out of the room, leaving the poor boy scarlet on the sofa. <laughs> With you on the sofa too, I suppose. I would, yeah, on the edge of it. Then what happened? You know, the usual. First he'd edge up a bit closer, then the arm would go round and... Oh, well, you know what it's like when we're 16. I do at the moment. You know, it, it's funny, we've both been married and yet I'm still a bit nervous about our date. Yeah, well, 
least my mum isn't here to keep an eye on us. Mind you, she's only next door. <laughs> Um, just throw me out when I've overstayed my welcome. Don't worry, I will. I've really enjoyed tonight. You know, I was a bit worried that I might have messed things up on Friday. I'm trying to kiss you, I'm, I'm sorry about no, that. No, no, it's OK. It's like you say, it just takes a, takes a bit of getting used to going out on dates again. Do you mind if I kiss you now? No. If you, if you want to. Well, I think it's obvious I am. I find you very attractive. Terry, have you eaten? I'm sorry I didn't know you were back today. Could have given me a heart attack there. So what's this then? Tell he's taken in lodges while I've been away. I, uh, I'll take it this is yours. Terry's just been helping me out for a while. As you were away, he had the space. I'll move on now you're back. So I'll tell he's a bit of a dark horse, isn't he? No wonder he's going around looking so happy. It's just an arrangement. I've been using your room. Oh, I see. So there's nothing going on, eh? Everything's above board. Yes, it is. Sorry to disappoint you. No, Brian, please stop. What's the matter? Sorry. I shouldn't have started this. Hey, come on. Don't be upset. I, I understand. No, you don't. Not really. There's something I should have told you much earlier, but I... I don't know how. Well, no problem. Tell me now. I had an illness. Uh, I was ill um, nearly two years ago. Was it serious? Yes. I I'm, I'm OK now. But um, I had cancer and I had to have an operation. I don't know how to start to explain. Um, what operation? Breast cancer. A mastectomy. Oh, Frank, I know the way you feel. We can't go into a marriage like this. Not without laying down some sort of rules. Is it the money that bothers you? Well, the extravagance bothers me. But it isn't only that. Lynn, I got it for the school work. It isn't just for stupid games. Oh, come on, be honest. You got it to win her over. An affection can't be bought like that. She has got to be brought round. Everything is going great apart from her. I mean, if she was mine, then I would do things different. There'd be no messing. But, Lynn, I am trying to do it your way. But bribing them is not the way either. I want them to love you for you, not your presence. Lynn, I don't know how to play it. I'm either too soft or I'm too hard. Oh, don't let it get to you. I know how hard it must be for you. I want them to like me. I know I'm not the stepdad yet, but... I feel like I'm on the outside all the time. I want them to be my family too. Lynn, I need to do things for them. But you do, Frank. <laughs> well, by being here, taking an interest in them. You enjoy their company, they know that, and it's great. Other things will come in time. Who knows? Maybe even approval from my daughter. So the computer goes back then? Well, maybe not. If it's clear it's a present for both of them. Otherwise, we'll have to get our Gavin something. Ah, uh, what would I do without you? <laughs> Grow old and wrinkly on your own. <laughs> and don't worry about our Ally. She'll come round in the end. I'll see to it. Well, if the checkups are only once a year, that, that's good then, isn't it? It's encouraging, yes. And is there a good chance when that you'll be out of the woods, you know, when there's a time that it, it won't come back? Well, five years is a bit of a turning point, but I don't think you ever feel safe. I worry if I feel ill with a cold, wonder if it's reoccurring, but then that's how it is. It's hard, you know. It's hard for someone on the outside to get your head round it. 
No, I understand. But they're making great progress these days, aren't they? They're, they're bound to come up with something sooner or later. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know that you don't want to hear this. It... I should have uh, let you know much earlier, given you a chance to get used to it. It's not really the sort of thing you mention on a first date. No. Would have broken the ice, though. <laughs> I suppose I better make a move, really. <laughs> we both got work in the morning. Yeah. And again, I'm sorry. Well, no, but... don't be. I had a lovely evening. Bye. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. See you. doing going out on dates like some stupid teenager who will ever understand what I went through except Max he went through it with me only Max really understands Sally where have you been mate me all fellas why well, I didn't think you cared. Well, I was beginning to think you were trying to avoid me, you know. And now I know the reason why. Ah, I take it by that you've spoken to Anna. Well, I was a bit of a surprise, that said, but uh, fair enough. So how are you getting on? You're on there, or what? Oh, we're getting on all right, um, if you could say we're an item. Bit of a quick worker, though, aren't you, sir? I mean, I've only been gone a couple of weeks. But, yeah, well, I mean, I, I asked her out, and then, you know, after that, things moved along fairly quickish. Hey, Annie, you're a bit shy, aren't you? I mean, you didn't mention there was anything going on between you and me mates here before. I thought I'd leave it to your mate to tell you. All oh, right. Well, fair enough. Hey, listen, are you sure you don't mind sleeping on the couch? It's all right. She can have my bed. I'll, uh, I'll sleep on the couch. Um, by the way, there's something you should know. And, um, well, you're going to be the first to hear this. Me and Anna, we're getting married. <laughs> You'll have me on. No, it's true. Popping round. Margaret said you'd be in. No, no, not at all. Have I come at a bad time? Uh, it's just the new Oxford account. Ah, the charity. How's it going? Well, you know, it's early days, but we're getting there. Great. Look, Brian, about yesterday. I can't just stand here and pretend nothing happened. And to be absolutely honest with you, I really don't know what to say. You're the last person I expected to see today. I see. I should have told you. I, I, I should have warned you about my illness. No, there's no need. I'm just really, really sorry that you had to find out like that. There's no need to apologise, honestly. It's all my fault. I should never have let things go that far. I wanted things to go that far. I mean, come on, Patricia, why do you think I'm here? This, it, it, it it's not a problem, really. For you, maybe. Look, I do understand, you know. 
All right, I'll admit it comes a bit of a shock at first. But as far as I'm concerned, you're still the same woman I wanted to go out with. Still the same person I wanted to be with. Well, that's why I came round. I mean, can't we give it another go? No, I'm, I'm sorry, no, it, it's, it's not you. It just doesn't feel right. None of this feels right. I'm sorry, I, I didn't It's mean not to... your fault. I... My divorce hasn't even come through. I, I feel as if I'm rushing into things, and I'm just not ready for this. I'm not ready for any of this. Yeah. Didn't your mother tell you it was rude to stare at people? Oh, charming. There you are, Mick. So, what do you think? Just the ticket, eh? Yes, yeah, sir. You've done this before. <laughs> not exactly. Although, when I was in the army in the medical corps, we used to paint the red crosses on the sides of the ambulances. Steady hand and an eye for detail, that's all you need. Well, looks like we're in business. Absolutely. Well then, here's to a successful partnership, eh? Nice one, yeah. Bing. You know, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to getting this van out on the open road. It should keep me nice and busy during the day. <laughs> Isn't that why you retired, though? So you wouldn't be kept busy? Oh. People retire because they're told to. Because society says that after a certain age, you're no use. But I believe that as long as you're lucky enough to stay mentally fit, you can always make a contribution. And what better way of keeping fit than work, can I? Absolutely. Oh, all right, boys. All right, Jimmy. Uh, Listen, you haven't seen anything of Brian Kennedy from the cell? Ah, yeah. oh, it's gone five o'clock. Jimmy's probably not tough. If you want me to give him the message, I can. I'll be around for a bit longer. Yeah, you're all right, Ben. I'll catch him in the morning. So, what do you reckon, Jimmy? What's this? Flowers and pizzas in the same van. <laughs> it's called utilising your resources. I don't care what it's called, I'll tell you something. I wouldn't want my roses smelling of anchovies and my pizzas tasting the tulips, thank you very much. <laughs> Please stop, Jimmy. Our pizzas are packed in proper boxes. Yeah, and I'll bet your van still stinks of all that cheese, though, doesn't it? Well, if we're going to have any problems, we'll know soon enough. I've got a couple of bouquets to deliver before we close. <laughs> Complaining customers the last thing I need. I'm glad I'm not on tonight. Mike and Keith can take all the flack. Why are they working tonight, Sally? Yeah, it's been night for the sports centre. So they'll be there all night, then? Well, yeah, till we close. Why not, sir? Well, it's a rave night, isn't it? You know, I mean, all those kids, loads of them, looking for pizzas and that. Wouldn't like to think of you missing out on all that business, would you? That's young Alice. She wants to watch herself there. Sorry? Hanging around here, pulling faces at people. It's the parents, if you'd ask me. Do you know that? It's like all these kids at the rave night, isn't it? Hey? They're all the same. Cheeky little gets. What they need is a good clip round the ear hole. Someone to tell them the difference between right and wrong. All right, Jimmy. Uh, did you sort that little thing out for me? Uh, yeah, all right, Bray. Uh, we'll go inside, shall we? I'll see you later, see boys. See you later, Jimmy. <sighs> Must admit, I never had Jimmy down as a responsible parent. No, he's right. Parents should be more responsible. Thanks very much, Bray. Sorry? You only landed me in it out there. I'm walking round with over 100 quid's worth of cocaine in my pocket and you just stroll up and ask me for it just like that, Jimmy. I didn't even mention drugs. Anyway, do you think those two knew what we were talking about? The pizza man and some old duffer. Yeah, OK, on. all right. Next time, just wait until we're alone. Here, yeah, take it. Yeah, all right. Look, you're right, I'm sorry. It was just that I felt the need of a little bit of a pick-me-up. Woman trouble, you know how oh, it is. Tell me about it. Hey, listen, um, I was wondering if I could have a quiet word, you know, something you might be able to help me with. Yeah, sure, if I can. Far away. But I got a letter this morning from a solicitor. Trouble? No, I just had a bit of a run-in with a tow rag in the club, you know. Anyway, top and bottom of it is, his solicitor sent me a letter telling me to steer clear. Ah, uh, I see. What can I do? Is it legal? You know, I mean, solicitors, can they send out letters like that? I'm not sure. Well, I would have thought you'd have known about that sort of thing. You know, all your mates and that, the professionals, aren't they? Solicitors and that. Oh, yes, but, I mean, that doesn't qualify me to give you legal advice, does it? Oh, yeah, all right, look, um, it, it, it seems to me as if they're just firing a warning shot. Best thing you can do is keep out of this person's life. <sighs> Don't think I'll be able to do that. Of course, there's always another way of dealing with your troubles. <laughs> Release forgetting them for a while, you fancy a line. Well, no. Yeah, no time like the present, is there? Forget your troubles and they'll forget you. It's what I always say. You might as well sample what you've been selling. And um, and uh, listen, I'll uh, I'll sort this problem my way. Eh? Suit yourself. 
And they haven't left you a key? No. How on earth can you be expected to feed yourself if you can't even get in the house? Well, look, I'm sure they'll be home soon. Could be any time. Really? But where are they exactly? Pub again, probably. A pub? My mum never used to drink before she met him. Well, look, I, I can't leave you hanging around here on your own. It'll be dark soon. It's Mrs. Crosby's bridge now. Right, well, there's only one thing for it. Come on. What? Where are we going? Just to Aigbeth and back to deliver these. But I seem to remember there's one of those uh, burger bar places on the way. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Come on, then. Pub, really. There you go, love. Thanks very much. Till I know. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't waste much time, do you? You what? Already looking for your own little love nest, are you? No, just passing the time of day. So what can I do for you? Well, you can start off by telling me I'm not going mad. You what? Well, first of all, as you get married, and now I've just found out that Jimmy has been running the club better than me for the last few weeks. Yeah, well, life's full of little surprises, isn't it? Yeah, well, I can live with Jimmy proving to me that he's not an old man. Oh, but you can't handle me getting on with my life doing what I want to do. Oh, well, come on, Sally. I mean, you've only known that out of less than a month. I mean, you're getting married. That's why I can't get my head round. I'm not asking you to get your heads round it, because it's got nothing to do with you. Listen, you're not in trouble, are you? I mean, she's not pregnant, is she? You what? Well, I mean, if it's just a matter of money, Tay, you know I'll sort you out. No, she isn't pregnant, and even if she was, I wouldn't want your money. Sorry, yeah. Uh, you know she used to be in a work at the club, don't you? Yeah, she was an escort in your club, so what does that make you? Oh, well, all right, I was only saying, wasn't I? So, well, how did you meet? Well, we just did, didn't we? I mean, like, you know, round the shops and that. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, I asked her out. Just like that? Yeah, and she said, yeah. Oh, I see. Big whirlwind romance, eh? Yeah, if you like. I mean, it does happen. Uh, uh, pump two, is it, mate? Right, uh, thanks. All right, boss. Back then? Yeah, yesterday. I've been looking for you. Yeah, I had a bit of personal business to sort, you know. What on work time? What's been happening? And no surprises, Jimmy. Have you seen the takings for the last four weeks? You've been away. Hope you haven't been pulling any strokes, lad. Who, me? Yeah, you. Hey, listen, about tonight, I need an hour off. Any chance? Jimmy, I can't do it. There's rave on tonight. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's our Carney's first birthday, isn't it? Jackie's organised a little bit of a do. Come on, boss, just an hour. I mean, I can't miss my granddaughter's first birthday party, can I? Hey? And I'll be back before things get started, isn't it? All right. Well, I want you back by 11. You're here. No problem. Thanks, boss. I appreciate that. Give me just enough time to blow someone's candles out. Hi, love. I'm in here. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. What is it? Terrible. That's all right. I've started a tea anyway. Oh, thanks. I've been run off my feet all day. Well, I've been on my backside all day, so you sit yourself down. I'll make you a nice cup of tea in a minute. Oh, you'll make someone the perfect husband, Frank Rogers. I'll just get this lot put by, and then I'll get out your way. Harder, kids. Your Gavin's gone over to Tony Dixon's for his tea. Send me back about nine. And where's our Alison? Upstairs. She hasn't come home yet. But it's six o'clock. She should have been home two hours ago. I know, but... Oh, why didn't you say something? Because you wouldn't just come in. But she's a 13-year-old girl, for goodness sake. Anything could have happened to her. Oh, come on, Lynn. It's not the first time your Alison hasn't come straight home. But we don't even know where she is. She'll be next door with David Crosby, talking about computers and that. What are you doing? Well, what do you think? I'm going to look for my daughter. Captain, you up there, right? Hey, that was great, that boy. It's all right. Let's take a breather, eh? Take it easy, relax for a bit. Because all you could do is something to hold that for you. There you go, Gary. Yeah, go nice and quick. Go ahead. There's no one in at the Crosby's. So did you check the back garden? There's no one in, the shed's locked. 
Well, Lord Gavin hasn't got a clue where she is. Oh, come on, Lynn. You know she's been like since I came out of Ozzy. She's just trying to wind us up again. Well, we've got to find her, Frank. Don't worry, love. We'll find her. Yeah, Peter Allison might have seen her. Peter! You haven't seen our Allison, have you? Lynn's daughter. Sorry, Frank. I've been in all evening with my head in the book. Is everything all right? Yeah, it's just that uh, she hasn't come home from school yet, sir. But I'm sure she'd turn up. Well, if you check the shops, there's always kids hanging around there, isn't there? Yeah, uh, we'll do that. Right, well, I hope you find a scene anyway. See ya. Cheers, mate. Oh, God, where is she? It's like he said she'd be around at the shops. Oh, yeah, but what if she isn't? What if something's happened to her? I'll never forgive myself. You what? This is all my fault. I should have asked the kids what they wanted before I accepted this. I just went ahead with all our plans without even thinking to ask my own kids how they felt about us getting married. Hi. Oh, all right. How are you? Oh, not bad. I could do with someone else's company other than Barry's. I mean, he's been in and out of here all day, giving me the third degree. Oh, don't worry. I've said nothing to him. He'll get nothing out of me. But what does he want to know? <laughs> Everything. So you're going to have to prepare yourself for a good grilling. Because he's not the sort of person who takes no for an answer. And, er, uh, I'm sorry about last night, you know, glating her out. But I just felt someone had to know sooner or later about us getting married and that. No, it's OK. It did come as a bit of a shock, but I think you're right. Why is he so suspicious? He was born suspicious. Well, we'll just have to be careful. Yeah, I mean, don't tell him anything and we'll be fine. Do you think it would help if the sleeping arrangements in the flat were a bit more natural? Mm, what do you mean? It must look funny, you sleeping on the couch, and I bet it isn't very comfortable. You mean, like, me and you together? I mean, if you think it's a good idea. Well, yeah, I mean, sound by me. But remember, Terry, no more than that, as we agreed. Oh, yeah, of course, I mean, it is only to make it look more real, isn't it? As you say, uh, it is only an arrangement. It's a lot easier when you get involved with other people, you know? What is? Training, sport, anything like that. Encouraging each other, talking to each other, teamwork. That's why I enjoy taking the footy so much. Yeah, I've heard you bossing all the little ones around. That's why you do it. You get a kick out of telling people what to do. I get a kick out of helping people. Yeah, I know. Especially deprived kids like us. I've heard it all before. You're just as bad as the other one. What other one? That's Snake Charlie Weeks. Hang on a minute. I suppose you live out in Chilwall in some big posh house as well. I live in a flat above a shop. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Come on, Gary. Look, why can't you just leave me alone, mate? Why is everyone always having a go at me? Is that what you've been telling your mummy? Everyone's always having a go at you. Is that why she came charging down here? Look, leave me mum out of this, all right? I wasn't the one who involved in the first place. I'm warning you. Gary! Right, Charles. So you still haven't made any progress with our friend Salt, huh? I don't know. Just won't let me get near him. Look, it's not just you. Your best policy is to steer clear. Well, I thought the idea of this project was to help the kids get out of themselves a bit. You know what it is? You know what it's like, Mick. Some people just don't want to be helped. Any sign of her? Well, Teddy said he saw her about an hour and a half ago, but no sign of her since. Oh, God, she could be anywhere. Somebody might have taken her. What? In their car. She was hanging around the petrol station, for God's sake. Hang on a minute. Where are you going now? Phone the police. Are you sure? Look, I think she'll turn up, you know. In the name of God, my daughter's missing. Anything could have happened to her. Alison! Alice, where have you been? The hamburger, Mr. Crosby. Yes, we had some of those uh, chicken nugget thingamajigs as well. It's very tasty, really. Your mother's been worried sick. Well, I found her hanging around on the parade here, and I didn't want to go off and leave her on her own. Thanks, anyway. Uh, listen, there seems to have been a bit of a breakdown in communications. You what? Between you and Alison as to your uh, whereabouts. Hey? You know, your um, 
Hey, no, I ain't gone a minute. Frank, let's just get home, eh? Right, let's forget about it, shall we? Call it a misunderstanding. Wait till your mother gets you home, madam. Frank. You really enjoy helping out down here, don't you? Yeah. Well, most of the time. Well, I'm not dealing with irate parents. Mm, Gary's mom. Listen, we've all had a good tongue lashing from Mrs. Salter. In fact, it's a bit like an initiation ceremony. <laughs> well, thanks for warning me. No sweat, friend. <laughs> no, seriously, though, Mick, we're all really impressed with the work you're doing down here. Oh, thanks. We need people like you running the projects. So how would you feel about joining the committee? Me? Yeah. It'd be a chance to have a say in how things should be run, a chance to put your own ideas into action. Well, sounds good. Is that a yes? Well, I've got no chance. I've got a business and two kids to look after. I'm not so sure how much more spare time I've got. It'd only be a matter of attending the odd committee meeting. And that's it? Well, yeah, well, you might be asked to supervise the occasional outing or fundraising event, but they're few and far between. All right. Count me in. Nice one. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> oh, um... Are you doing anything on Friday night? Well, I'm working, but uh, I suppose I could get someone to cover for me. Well, I've arranged for a group of kids to go to one of these Quasar things. You what? Yeah, it's a laser game. The kids are mad about it. Anyway, I've managed to wangle a few free tickets. I thought it'd be nice to take the kids out as a group, you know, socially. Oh, right, and uh, you need someone to help you out. Oh, uh, well, actually, it's a little more than that. Uh, I, I can't make it. Something's come up. So you want me to take the group out on my own? It'd be a great help. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. But, uh, why do I get the feeling I've been stitched up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mick. I'm really grateful. Oh, no problem. Oh, Charles, uh, before you shoot off, can I have a quick word? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's about Marianne. I don't know how to say this. Um, what's going on at work? Well, has she said something? Yeah, she's, uh, she's talking about resigning. You what? You didn't know? I'm sorry, mate. I thought you would have told you. Oh, this is news to me. Uh, has she uh, hinted at what the problem might be? No, not a thing. To be honest, um, I was hoping you might have a word with her. Me? Well, yeah, you know, as a mate as well as a boss. I know how much you respect her. And I thought that you might be able to talk her to resigning. You see, I know that if she just gives it a bit more time, she'll be able to sort out whatever it is that's bothering her. Don't worry, Mick. I'll have a little chat with her. Don't you worry. Nice one. I'm telling you, Lynn, we can't have their messing us about like that. If David Crosby hadn't have turned up when he did, we'd have had the police around here. Eh? Well, shouting and screaming at her isn't going to do much good. Yeah, well, if she was one of mine, I wouldn't have to shout at her. And what do you mean by that? I wouldn't let things get this far, that's what I mean. We can't have a kid running all over the place making monkeys out of us. So what exactly do you suggest I do? Why don't you let me talk to her? And I'll tell her what we should have told her before she started all this nonsense that we're getting married whether she likes it or not. That we're not going to be held to ransom by some 13-year-old girl. Frank, you can't say that. She's upset enough, for goodness sake. Well, you can say what you want, because I don't care, because I'm not coming to your stupid wedding anyway. <sighs> well done, Frank. Wake you. Just thought I'd pop in and say hello. Get out of here. Shut it! Hey. Not very nice, is he? Not very nice when you're not in control. When someone else is telling you what to do. Now lie <laughs> down. Don't move. Be nice and quiet. How does it feel, eh? 
How did our Diana feel when you held her down? When you raped her? Come on then. Do it. She's gonna beat me up. Just do it. That's what you want, isn't it? Oh what? And you think it'll all be over and done with? As easy as that? No chance. Because you're gonna serve a life sentence, mate. A life sentence for rape. And I'm gonna make sure you serve it. Because no matter what that poxy judge and jury said, you are guilty. And what's more, you know it. Yes. And you're gonna carry that guilt to your grave. I want you to live to a hundred. Shut it! And so long as you go on living round here, I'm gonna make sure that you don't even so much as look at a woman. Because I'll be watching your every step, your every move. And you can go to the busies. And you can go to every lawyer in the land. But it won't do you any good. Because I'll still be here, reminding you. Reminding everyone that you are a rapist. If I come with you, I can run you and the kids to your mum's. It's OK. We can get a taxi. What's time will you be back? Oh, after we've had our tea. I'm sorry, Frank, but we agreed. It's best if you and our Alison keep out of each other's way for a bit. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why can't we talk to her and get it all out in the open? What, like you did last night? Oh, I admit, I went over the top a bit. But she had to be told. We can't let her... Come and look at us. She's running our lives. Oh, come on, Frank. I'm only taking her to my mum's for a tea. Mum's promised to look at her school project. That'll cheer her up. She's only after a little bit of attention. Yeah, let's hope so, eh? For everyone's sake. I'm glad I bumped into you. Last time we spoke, we weren't exactly nice to each other. No. I think we said a lot of things we didn't mean. Yes. So how are you enjoying living here? It's fine. Things are a bit crowded now that Barry's back. Yeah, I can imagine. Not much space, is there? We manage. And I, uh, I pity whoever has to sleep on the sofa. Doesn't look very comfortable. No, it's not bad. Listen, Peter, there's something I should tell you. I'm going to... Hey, yeah, uh, you haven't seen me car keys about, have you? There's some keys there by the microwave. Right, sir. Thought I'd lost them. So, don't mind me. We were just chatting. I suppose she's telling you all about the big wedding plans, eh? What? N no, I've bought Peter enough with those already, haven't I, Peter? Oh, yeah, I've heard all about that. Well, I suppose it's a bit of a shock, isn't it? I mean, your mate Anna and my mate Terry getting married. Yeah, you and Terry, I suppose so. Right, then. 
Sorry to intrude. See you later. Bye. I'm sorry, Peter. I was about to tell you. <laughs> Just came as a bit of a surprise, I saw. You knew I was looking for someone. Yeah, but it's happened so quickly. I'm an illegal immigrant, Peter. I can't afford to hang around. No, of course you can't. Congratulations. Congratulations? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to say, isn't it? Well, even when it's not a proper marriage. That's what you wanted, though. Yeah, you know what I've always wanted. You. Let's not better go. Anna, we've been through all this. I'm sorry, I just Anna, thought... I can never get married as long as I stay around here. I had a visit from our friendly neighbourhood psycho last night. What? Jimmy Gorkill. He broke into the house and attacked me. He promised he'd make my life a misery if I stayed on the close. Keith said there'd been some threat, but this... <sighs> I don't know what he's going to do next. He split me and Beth up. Told her mother about my... Uh, my past. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. I tried using the law, but it didn't work. I don't know where it's going to end. All right, Max. Hey, Rick. How's it going? Not bad, you know. Dad, we're going to be late. Hang about, son. I'm talking to Margaret here. Anyway, there's still a couple of hours to go yet. Two hours? Yeah, so go on and wait until we're ready. Whatever it is, it sounds like he's looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm taking a group of kids from the sports project to one of these laser game thingies. I thought I'd take Leo as well. That sounds like fun. Yeah, well. Come on, Dad. All right, son. Wish I hadn't mentioned it now. I think we'll see if I can calm him down. <laughs> see you later. See you, Rick. Peter. Oh, yeah. Late breakfast. I just fancy the next sandwich or so. Um, listen, are you going to be in all day today? Yeah, I've no plans to go anywhere. Is it okay if I pop round and see you later? Sure. It's just me and Patricia are going to Oxford for a while on business. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I thought an old college boy like you might be able to recommend a few places. What, pubs, you mean? Yeah, well, as long as they're not too wild, I'll have Patricia with me. Well, I'll put my ticket cap on, I'll see what I can find. Okay, thanks. All right, I'll see you. See you later. Boo. See you Monday. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Right. Are you sure about all of this? Of course I am. Peter told me he's very upset. All right, it's true. So what? Well, you've got to speak to Jimmy. Get him to stop making these threats. I haven't got to do anything. This is nothing to do with me. He works for you. Please, as a favour. As a favour for who? For me. Why should I do a favour for you? Well, do it for Terry, then. How do you mean? He'd want you to help me. You are supposed to be his friend, aren't you? All right. I'll speak to Jimmy. But, er... Uh, First, I want to know what the score is between you and Terry. I think that's our business. Well, not when I think Terry's getting involved in something that he can't handle. Terry's old enough to make his own decisions. See, me and Terry go back a long way. We've been mates since we were this high. And I know him better than anyone. And I know he needs looking after. So when I see him shacked up with someone like you, well, I start to worry. Someone like me? Yeah. We're well, not exactly sure as a fellas, are you? I mean, uh, I've seen you in the nightclub. They're all over you. So why would you want to marry someone like Terry? Someone with no money, no prospects, nothing. Why Terry? He's a very attractive man. He's caring and he trusts me. It's always been one of Terry's faults, that. It's far too trusting. You don't seem to have a very high opinion of your mate. It's not my mate I haven't got a very high opinion of. You really don't like me, do you? What is your problem? 
I don't know. Ah, oh, hello there. All right. I hope you don't mind my calling round, Frank, but uh, I thought we ought to have a little powwow about last night. You what? Young Alison. What is it now? Well, I'd just like to clear the air about a couple of things, you know, put the record straight. No way. Our trip to the burger bar, that was entirely my idea, and I wouldn't like to think that Alison was getting blamed in any way. I mean, the child was obviously hungry, and I couldn't leave her to roam the streets on her own, so I thought I'd better look after her myself. Yeah, you were right. And thanks for looking after her. Anyway, it did give Alison and I an opportunity to have a really good chat about things, and um, she got an awful lot of stuff off her chest. Oh, yeah. She needed to talk to someone, Frank. About what? Well, I, I know this can't be easy for you after your illness and all that. What's that got to do with anything? And uh, I take it you're not working, so that must be a real strain. Hang it? about. What's this about? Well, surely there must be better ways of dealing with things, Frank. I mean, let's face it, drinking never sold anything, did it? You what? There are people you can go to for help, you know. For drinking? So this is what Alison's been getting off her chest? Well... Yes. That I'm some sort of alky. Well, she said you do enjoy your lunchtime tipple. I've just had a heart attack. I haven't had a drink in ages. Doctor's orders. Oh. I see. Yeah. And so do I. I think you'd better come in and tell me exactly what Alison's been saying. Can I be on your side, Dad? Yeah, of course you can, son. Go ahead. Hey, Vic, have you got a minute? All right, first. Hey, I want to stop away with you. About Sally. Well, what's up? Dad! Oh, all right, sir. Sorry about you saying. Uh, I just wanted to know what the score was. You know, with the two lovebirds while I've been away. Hey? You know, Terry and Anna, the wedding plans. What, they're getting married? You didn't know? <laughs> it's the first I've heard of it. That's brilliant that I made up for them. So, when did all this happen? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. <sighs> well, I suppose it's a bit sudden, like, but if that's what they both want, then good luck to them. You would have thought he'd have told you. I mean, you're one of his mates. Yeah, you know, these things are like Bez. Maybe they just wanted to keep it to themselves for now. Yeah, but I thought you'd be made up. I thought you'd be going around selling everyone. Yeah, I suppose so. Anna's quite a catch, isn't she? Exactly. Dad! Oh, all right, son. You had the boys done well, hasn't he? Yeah. See you, mate. Very well. if you'd asked. And we do have word processors these days, you know. Or do you prefer the personal touch? After all, it's not every day you resign, is it? What? Mick told me last night. He did what? He even asked me if I'd try and talk you out of it. But I don't think that's a very good idea, do you? I mean, let's face it, you've blown it, haven't you? You'd have had a really good future here if you'd done things my way. If you'd seen my point of view, but oh no, Miss High and Mighty, you know it all, don't you? Too good for me. Too good for the company. Go on, that's it. Walk. What the hell are you doing? What I should have done weeks ago. I'm fighting back. What? This will be on the managing director's desk first thing Monday morning. What will? A memo. Accusing you of sexual harassment. You what? Why so surprised, Charles? Not used to people standing up to you? It won't wash, Marianne. They won't believe you. Maybe they won't. But I've got nothing to lose, have I? And if I can prove to just one person what a complete slime bag you are, then it'll all be worth it. Come on. And remember what the man said, no running and no physical contact. I was split into two teams, red to the left, greens to the right. Where do we go, Dad? We're on this side, son. We're the greens. Go on, come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. I'll go with the reds, then. All right, Gary. Didn't expect to see you. Didn't think you liked team games. Oh, it all depends on who's on my side, doesn't it? Go on. What's your step now? 
Have a pause with some? Yo. Yes. Hi. Back to have a word. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, your friend Anna came to see me. Seems she's worried about you. She told you everything then? Well, she said Jimmy had threatened you. Well? Well, um, you know, I can't stop Jimmy being a lunatic, can I? But I can give you some advice. Keep your head down. Or go away for a while. I mean, you never know. After a couple of weeks, I might forget about you. Okay, so I'll go away for a couple of weeks. But what if he doesn't forget? But like I say, I can't control him. Right. Thanks. Hey, listen, um, you and Anna, I mean, you must be pretty good friends here coming to see me like that. Yeah, we're good friends. So what I can't understand is uh, why she's moved out the house and moved into the flat. Well, you know, it's a, a three-bedroom house and there were four of us living there, so... So uh, you kick out your best mate before two no-mark students? No, it wasn't like that. Well, what was it like then? Terry asked her to move in, did he? Shouldn't you be talking to Terry about that? Aren't you just a little bit curious about uh, them getting married so quickly and all? Look, Anna's a mate, but she's... She's also a grown woman. She doesn't need me telling her how to run her life, and I'm sure the same applies to Terry. Yeah, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Hey. Hi. Just on my way around to yours. Oh, yeah? Thought we're in a good place, is yet? I've done better than that. I thought I'd take you round them myself. What? Well, I thought I'd get off for a couple of weeks, go down to Oxford, look up a few old friends. Oh, brilliant. When was that decided? Just now. Yeah, I've mowed a couple of weeks off, so I thought I'd take them. Great. Well, I'm on my own for the first couple of days, so I could do with some company. Okay. How are you getting down there? Um, train. Well, I'll give you a lift. Okay. And then you can buy me a pims and what you say. Brilliant. Right. You're on. <laughs> Oxford, here we come. <laughs> Hey, guy, there's other people on my team as well, you know. Come on, have we got to attack the base? Okay, so, I'm behind you. I don't like people lying to me, Jimmy. Hey? Spinning me some story by going to some party the other night when you're really going somewhere else, like Peter Addison's. You've got it all wrong. Look, don't waste your breath. How many times have I told you to stay away from that punce? And how come you care so much about him, eh? I couldn't give a toss about him. But I've told you before, I don't want you out there messing about when you're supposed to be here working for me, all right? All right, all right. Dirty little get. Jimmy, are you soft or something? What do you think you are, a vigilante? Don't you know that if the busies catch you down there hassling him, they'll lock you up and throw away the key? No, they won't. They give me a medal. Because I'm doing what they can't and what the court won't, which is making sure that scum like Addison get what they deserve. Real justice. Jimmy, you've been watching too many Charles Bronson movies. No, I haven't. I've been reading the papers. And me, and people like me, are sick of creeps like him walking the streets. We're fighting back. Yeah, well, not while you're working for me, Jimmy. Now, just get him out of your head, eh? Anyway, he's going away for a while. And where's he going? I don't know, just away. Yeah, but he'll be back, won't he, eh? Walking round with that smarmy gob as if nothing happened, rubbing my nose in it. You what? How do you think I feel, eh? Seeing him out there, laughing and joking like Lord Snooty, thinking he can do what he likes because he's some posh knob and I'm just a two-bit scally. Yeah, well, he's not giving me the chance to forget, is he? And while he's living on the close, I won't forget. I just want him away from here, that's all. I don't care where he goes, so long as it's miles away. And it's permanent. <laughs> Hi, the butty. What about you? Oh, you know me, Mum. Always makes a fuss for the kids. Did you have a good time? Yeah, fine, thanks. What about your Alison? Did she enjoy herself? Oh, yeah, she's feeling happier already. Told you she'd be all right, didn't I? Probably made up that I wasn't there. Oh, Frank. Well, we all know what a drunken bully I am. <laughs> Whoops. 
I wasn't your aid. About my drink problem. Well, after close up. In fact, David Crosby was even kind enough to come around to offer me some advice. I don't understand. No. And I don't understand, Lynn, why a 13 year old girl would go around telling lies about someone like that. What? Our Alison? Yeah. That's right. You're Alison. Wait. No, not you, Gary. I want a word with you, lad. So, you know, someone way hits him. You just can't go around hitting people, you know. All right, Gary. If you want to know what happened, I'm going to have to report all this to the committee. And we could lose the use of this place because of you. Big deal. Gary! All right, Charles. Wasn't expecting to see you. You, uh, you checking up on me? Mick, uh, look, we need to talk. Sure. All right, kids, collect your scores from the counter. And no pushing, right? What is it, Wizzy? What's going Meek, I'm sorry. What is it? Look, I had to come. I had to tell you. There's, there's no easy way to say this. It hasn't been an accident, has it? Is it Marianne? No. It's me and Marianne. She didn't want me to tell you, Mick, about us. About me and her. Hi, morning. We've been seeing each other. Mm -hmm. Why, you lousy I tried to end it, Mick, but she wouldn't have it. I trusted you. Look, it wasn't my fault. I didn't want things to go this far, but she kept pushing it. Now she's stirring up trouble for me at work because I finished it. I thought you was a mate. Well, all this time, you... You've been messing around with Marianne, with my woman. And then you, you come down here, you, you tell me all about it, in front of me son and all, in front of all these kids. What's, what's a man arguing? I'm sorry. You're sorry? You get out of here before I do something I regret the rest of my life. Get out of here! Score. He said that you come last, and he said that you were a cannon for the. Yes, sir. That's me. She is only a young girl, Frank. So that gives her the right to go down and tell everyone I'm a drunk. Oh, she was probably just trying to impress Mr. Crosby. Trying to be grown up. Well, lying like that isn't very grown up, is it? Oh, maybe we should stop her spending so much time next door. I, mean, I know he means well, but, but she should really be hanging around more with kids her own age. Lynn, this has got nothing to do with David Crosby. It's got nothing to do with her having no mates. It's to do with you and me getting married. I know. She's had it in for me ever since we announced the engagement. And she even tried to ruin that. Lynn, I've done everything you've asked of me. I bent over backwards to try and get on with it, and she's still carrying on. So what am I supposed to do? For a start, you can stop being so soft for her and letting her get away with murder. Oh, right. So I come down on Alison like a ton of bricks, and suddenly she's going to think the wedding's a great idea. Well, she needs to be taught a lesson. OK, she was wrong, and she needs to be punished, and she will be. But, Frank, I'm telling you this. She'll only get used to the idea of us marrying in her own good time. Oh, great. So we sit around and not get married until it's okay with Alison. Well, I don't see why we can go ahead with it the way things are at the moment. Are you serious? Of course I am. We can't possibly get married with all this going on. Hi, Mick. Hi, Leo. Dad, there's Marianne. Come wait inside, son. I want to see Uncle Sinbad. Did you have a nice time? Leo did. Good. Listen, Mick, there's something I've got to talk to you about. Let me guess. It's, uh, something's called Charles, right? Yeah. How did you know? Because I've just seen him down the quasar. What was he doing down there? Well, he was telling me about you and him. About you and him getting it on together while I've been knocking me back out in this place. For God's sake, Mick. He's lying. Well, you're going to tell me that uh, he came on to you earlier? Well, yeah, that's why I was waiting for you. I'm reporting him for sexual harassment. 
Is that what they call cheating on your boyfriend these days? I'm telling the truth, Mick. And this, uh, this harassment allegation's got nothing to do with him wanting to end the affair, I suppose. There's nothing to end. Charles has been harassing me for weeks. For what? He's been, he's been hassling you for weeks and you didn't even tell me. Why not? Why not, eh? I was frightened. I didn't know what you'd do. Or is it because there was nothing to say? Please. Charles is lying. You've got to believe me. I don't believe anything you tell me anymore. Brookside's back on Monday at the same time and don't forget our omnibus edition on Sunday morning at 10. Your mail. Ah, oh, probably all bills. You never know. Phone bill. Lucky bill and something about saving the rain for seeing us without opening the envelopes. <laughs> well, I shouldn't worry about that now. Two can live as cheaply as one, eh? I believe congratulations were in order. Chap from the pizza parlor said you got engaged. Yes, uh, this is Terry. Terry meets David, Patricia Fornham's father. We have already met, yeah. Yes, I'm working in the florist now, so we're almost neighbors. Yeah, that's right. Well, all the best you both. This is all very hush-hush, wasn't it, Anna? I mean, when was it decided? Well, very recently. Um, it was almost a whirlwind romance, you could say. Will you be married over here or back in Poland? Over here. Ah, oh, so your family will be coming over then? Uh, well, uh, we're not too sure about that at the moment, really, are we? Uh, no, um, uh, well, you see, we just want to keep it on the quiet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be lucky to get away with that, marrying a little Polish flower girl. I've met quite a few Polish chaps, and they're great traditionalists. Any excuse to crack open the vodka, eh, Anna? <laughs> all right, folks. Oh, all right, Mick. Uh, what can I do for you? Some change, if you can spare it, mate. Ten is worth of tens. No problem. I was just congratulating the happy couple. Oh, yeah, why don't you learn on it? But he told me. Anyway, let's have a look. Don't tell me the old cheapskate hasn't even bought you a ring. Who's the best man, eh, Barry? Um, well, we haven't uh, thought about that yet, because we were just going to... Uh, do you want to get in there? Do you want to wear? Oh, that's all right, I'll tell you later. <laughs> when Jean and I got engaged, we couldn't afford a ring. Had to wait until I got demobbed. So, what do I owe you? Uh, eight quid, please. So when's it to be then? What? What's it like? The wedding? Oh, uh, well, we uh, haven't finalised things yet, but uh, it'll probably be um, December. Yeah. Well, thanks. I'll see you all later. Yeah, Bye. I'll see you, B. Bye. Now, listen, Anna. Don't let him get away without buying you a ring. It's a big occasion. You make the most of it. Well, I'll work on him. Yeah, you do that. And he, I made it for you, mate. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> See you now. Yeah. See you. See you, Mick. So it's out, then. And it'll spread like wildfire knowing this place. This should be on your finger. I know, Frank. But what can I do? I've got to take my time with Alison. I don't want her to go missing again. Where's he going to stop? How do you mean? Every time she wants her own way in future, 
She's going to threaten to run away, and you're going to cave into her. No, I won't. Oh, this is different. Lynn, this is our future. I love you, you say you love me, and we should be married. It's not as simple as that, and you know it. I know that, love. Nothing ever is. We all make this simple for Alison. I know, I know. I do love you. I do want to marry you, but I don't want to lose my daughter. Lynn, put the ring back on. Tell Alison the wedding's back on. But be a bit firmer with her, for her sake as well. Lynn, it's our future. I'll treat you and the kids right, you know that. I know that, Frank. But honest to God, Lynn, I don't know what more I can do to try and win Alison round. She's just gonna have to accept the idea. Come on. Alison, love, let's talk about this, eh? I don't want you to get married to him. Alison, you're not being fair to your mum. She had met you, everything would be all right. Don't talk to Frank like that. We're gonna get married and you're gonna have to accept it. And I want us all to live happily together. No, never. I'm going out. Where to? To see Mr. Crosby. He's the only one round here who ever listens to me. <sighs> what can I say that doesn't make it seem I'm always against her? Oh, maybe I could have a word with David. Yeah, and ask him not to encourage her to go round there all the time. Oh, I don't know. Sounds a bit heavy, that. Just tell him that it's not right that a young girl's spending so much time with an old man like him. Maybe I could have a word with his daughter, Patricia. No sense in upsetting David. OK, if you think that's better. Yeah, she'll know what to say to her dad. But we are still getting married, then. <sighs> if you still want to. Of course I do. You try and stop me. I just want you to know that I'll still be here when you get back. Where is it you're going to, anyway? I could easily find out, you know. You should be locked up, college boy, for what you did to our Diana. I was found not guilty. You seem to have forgotten that. I haven't forgotten anything. You got away with it because of money. You raped her, and then your old man had enough cash to buy you out of it. You can't honestly believe that. Jimmy, can I have a word with you? Here's your receipt, Peter. Thanks. I might come and see you wherever it is you're going. Who knows? What's the matter with you? What do you mean? Having a go at him, why? Why? You know what he is. Yeah, I know he was taken to court for rape and found not guilty. No, he got off with it. Well, I'm not going to let him get away with it. I'm going to have him. Why, Jimmy? Why? Because what he's done to my family. Oh, wait, hey, come on. Don't be giving me all that clan rubbish. So whose side are you on, then? I'm on the side of common sense. I don't want to see you making a prat of yourself. Listen, I am doing what any man would do when something like a rape happened to his family. Oh, no, you're not. You're just using that as an excuse to terrorise somebody who's frightened of you. It's history. Why don't you forget it? Because he's an animal, and he should be driven away if the courts couldn't lock him away. Oh, go on. Tell me who you're doing it for, then. Your Rod, your Diana, the family name I've is... I've told it... you, haven't I? For all of that. No, you're not. You're using it for you, aren't you? You're doing it because you think it's expected of you. I mean, would you be having a go at him if he could handle himself, eh? Well, how come you're having a go at me? Oh, because I don't want to see you making an idiot of yourself, that's why. I mean, his house is up for sale, isn't it? He's moving on anyway. So why don't you just leave him alone, eh? No chance. Pat, sorry to bother you. That's all right. What can I do for you? Um, well, it's a little bit awkward, really. Oh? Oh, it's nothing to worry about. It's just that, um, well, you probably don't know. Me and Frank, we're getting married soon. Oh, no, I didn't. Congratulations. But well, the problem is, our Alison isn't taking it too well, and she's being a bit troublesome. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but, um, <laughs> what's it got to do with me? Oh, it's not you. It's your dad. My dad? Oh, don't get me wrong, I think he's a great fella. So does Alison. Well, that's the problem. You see, well, she's sort of befriended him. And the slightest problem in our house, and she's running next door to your dad. I'm just bothered she's becoming a bit, well, withdrawn. I want to encourage her to spend a bit more time with people her own age. I need your help. 
I'll do whatever I can, but what? Well, relations are a bit strained between me and Alison at the moment. If I tell her not to keep bothering your dad, she'll just flare up at me. You want me to have a word with him? Well, if you wouldn't mind, she might listen to him. She should be mixing a bit more. I'm just frightened that she's bottling up all her problems about me remarrying and burdening your dad with them. I'll see what I can do. I wouldn't want your dad to be offended, though. I mean, he's such a nice man. Don't worry, Lynn. Leave it to me. Thanks, Pat. What's happening with your house, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, a few cracks appeared. A surveyor's carrying out an inspection. I won't know what's happening myself till it's finished. Oh, well, good luck with it. I hope it's nothing too serious. Yeah, me too. And good luck with the wedding. When's it going to be? I am... Um, well, we were thinking about November. I just hope our Alison comes around to accepting it. Oh, I'm sure she will. She's at that difficult age. <sighs> oh, talking of <laughs> difficulties. Be careful with that ball, you. Anyway, I'll get off. Thanks, Pat. Okay, bye. Bye. But the building work isn't too horrendous. There you go. See you again, eh? Turn on. Hi. Hello. Oh, didn't expect to see you. I brought a birthday present for Leo. That's nice of you. I made up. Hope so. How are you then? A bit mixed up, to be honest. It shouldn't be, Mick. You should know exactly what's happening and who to believe. Me. Charles was pretty confident when he was telling me about you two. And you risked a good hiding. How could you take his side against me? He kept coming on to me. It was sexual harassment. And you don't believe it. It's not as simple as that. I mean, you didn't tell me that until after he told me that you two had been seeing each other. He's lying, Mick. And he's good at it. I have to get to work now. Well, I thought I had him again. No. That's certainly the most interesting link I've had for yonks. Yonks? Ages. Ah, no. Can't get him. Can I have a go? Yes. Why not? <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> no, <laughs> not like that. You've got to be a bit more gentle. No, let me show you. See? Softly, softly, catchy monkey. You say some funny things. <laughs> hello, Dad. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Alison. What are you doing? Well, we're looking to try and find a man in the middle of the Atlantic, actually. But Alison here has got to be a little bit more sensitive with her fingertip control, don't you? Ah, oh, you see, that's better. Got it? We think he's a lone yachtsman. Yeah. And we think you'd rather hear our voices than receive the facts. Exactly. We've been discussing the merits of good old-fashioned steam radio as opposed to all this modern gold anonymous computer talk. Sounds fascinating. Um, Dad, can you spare a moment? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, Alison, you can uh, keep searching, but whatever you do, don't transmit, for heaven's sake. I'll be in dead trouble, all right? Okay. Mm. Um... From where I was standing, Dad, um, all that could be uh, misunderstood. What are you talking about? Oh, Dad, you're so naive. Sometimes it's... You have to be very careful with children. What are you suggesting? You had your arm around her in the garden shed. I mean, people who didn't know you might think that's a bit unhealthy. Good grief, Patsy. You, you're not seriously suggesting that I... I uh, Words fail. No, Dad, I'm not suggesting anything wrong has gone on. I'm just saying that things can be misinterpreted. And, I mean, Alison's in a bit of an emotional state at the moment. Yes, I know. She's told me. Look, Dad, 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 Dad you cannot get involved. It's a completely mutual interest in communications, for God's sake. You're making me sound like a dirty old man molesting a child in a garden shed. No, I'm just pointing out how other people may see it. Lynn's had a word. Saying just what, exactly? Well, they're having a few problems with Alison, and they, they want to stop her coming round here without being too heavy with her. Ah, and they want me to do it for them, I suppose. Yes, Dad. I, I think Lynn's just worried that she's not spending enough time with friends of her own age. I think I just heard him, but he faded away. Come and try for yourself. Yes, I'll be, I'll be with you in just a tick, all right? <sighs> all right. I'll have a word with her. Good. I'll leave you to it. What a world we live in, eh? When a man can't befriend a lonely child. Because that's what she is, you know. 
I know, but I'm gonna need your help too. All right. See you later. Alison, I'm going to have to call it a day now. Oh, can't we just have another quarter of an hour, Mr. Crosby? I'm afraid not. I've got things to do, and uh, I've got to see if Mrs. Crosby needs some flowers delivering from a shop. I'm sure you can find some more interesting ways to spend your time. How do you mean? Well, uh, stuck in a garden shed trying to find a man in the middle of the Atlantic just to talk about the weather it can hardly be much fun for a girl of your age, can it? But I like being what you yeah, You make me laugh. <laughs> I can't imagine why. I'm just a crusty old codger who's well past his sell-by date. See? You say some funny things. Well, anyway, I think it's about time you found something else to do. Are you saying that you don't want me to come round again? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. <laughs> but I thought you liked me. You're only 13, Alison. You need to be playing with children of your own age. <laughs> you don't like me, do you? Don't be silly. That's not what I'm saying at all. All right, then I won't come round again. You're just like all the others, really, aren't you? I thought I could talk to you. Alison! Alison! for Margaret getting her a lift down there. What's happening with Jimmy Corker? No, things are pretty much the same, really. But thanks for talking to Barry anyway. He seems to think if I go away for a couple of weeks, it'll all blow over, but I'm not so sure. I seem to become some sort of obsession for Jimmy. Shouldn't you be talking to the police about him? Probably. But when I sent him the letter from the solicitor, he broke into my house. If I do anything more official, it will just get worse. There is somebody who could influence him, you know. Diana. No. Why not? But it, Jimmy's supposedly doing it for her sake. She could call him off. I'm sure she would. But I couldn't ask her. I've caused her enough pain already. You were found innocent, Peter. Don't forget that. I was found not guilty. They could easily have found against me. It was that close. You mustn't start to think like that. You're letting Jimmy get to you. At least consider talking to her when you come back if he's still threatening you. I'll just have to sort it out myself one way or another. Should I see your coffee? Yes, I'd love one. Hello again, Dad. Hi there. For me? That's what it says on the card. For Max? Uh, no. Sorry. Oh. Got time to come in? Yes, why not? Your mother's not exactly snowed under with work for me to do. Uh, when's Max due back? Wednesday, then I'll have to join Margaret in Oxford. Ah. You're still carrying a torch for him, aren't you? you make me sound like a cinema usherette. Come on, I'll put the kettle on. Mate Charles, have you? I've come to see you to ask about Charles. I've told you what's happening. I've reported him for sexual harassment, and he's covering himself by saying I'm upset because he ended our affair. Why don't you tell me about the harassment? Because I thought I could handle it. I'd like to think I'm an independent woman who can take care of herself. I still think I can. Let me down, Mick. Me? I've let you down. How could you consider believing him and not me? We meant something to each other. Come on, Marian. You can't blame me for not knowing what's going on. Charles is risking having his head ripped off, but he still went ahead and told me about you two. I've told you. He's a brilliant, very convincing liar. I think you've just been looking for a problem all along. What do you mean by that? Everything was going well between us. I think it was going too well from your point of view. You expected a problem to come along. Your own insecurity is stopping you believing me. 
He's a liar, Mick. I'm not. They're lovely, aren't they? Hmm. Very nice. Brian Kennedy's obviously quite taken with you. Oh, hardly, Dad. I mean, we're not talking dozens of roses and bottles of champagne here. Well, he has made the effort to send you some flowers, so he must feel somewhat encouraged by your friendship. Oh, don't overstate it, Dad. You make it sound as if there was something between us. Well, isn't there? No. I'm still a married woman, remember? Just about. How can I forget? I still feel responsible for the split-up between you and Max in the first place. It was Max's fault he did what he did with Susanna. I'm glad you told me. I'd have felt much worse if I'd found out later that you knew all about it. I can't help feeling guilty about it. Don't. I had to know. And you'll be getting the sack if you don't get back to Mum. Oh. Right. Oh, I've uh, spoken to Alison, by the way. Oh, how did it go? She was a bit upset, to be honest. I don't think I handled it very well. She's a bit highly strung at the moment. I suppose it's the strain of the impending marriage. Oh, I'm sure it is, and I'm sure you're best off out of it. I just feel sorry for the child. And as a matter of fact, she did tell me a few things about Frank Rogers that could just ring true. Like what? Like he enjoys a tipple in the house. Although he's quite adamant that he hasn't touched a drop since his heart attack. But they do say there is a link between alcohol abuse and heart disease. It's their problem, Dad. Keep out of it. <sighs> Don't worry. I will. Well, must get on then. OK. I'm not an invalid, you know. You're recovering from a heart attack. You don't drive for at least another two months. We'll walk. Gently. This is ridiculous. I've never felt fitter. How big are the cracks, then? Well, I don't know. Pat didn't look too happy about them. As long as it's their place and not ours. Alison seems to be a lot better since she's had a word with Patricia. Seems to have done the trick. Yeah. David must have said the right things to her. time at the moment. I've got to meet someone and I'm late. It'll only take a minute. <laughs> Look, we can talk tomorrow at the sports project. I just want to know the truth. Now, Marian denies everything. She said that you made up the affair to protect yourself from the sexual harassment allegation. Me? What can I say? These things happen in the heat of the moment, and I'm sorry, but it's true. Why should I believe you, Nadia? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I don't want to cause you any pain, but... It's the only way I can convince you that I'm telling the truth. What? You don't need to go into details, do you, Meek? I just don't know who to believe. Do I have to tell you of bra size? That her favorite black silk underwear was a gift from you? That she has a small birthmark low on her back? I could tell you more. Lots more, but I don't want to hurt you, Meek. <coughs> Look, I have to go. We'll talk at the next committee meeting. You will be there, won't you? We have to discuss the fight between the lads at the laser game. You know, the one you took them to. Yeah, yeah. Good. But I'll see you, me, and I'm truly sorry about this mess. Got a calculator? No. Why not? It's packed. Packed? Why? I'm running away. Well, don't talk soft. Where would you go to? I'm going to stay with my dad. Straight after school tomorrow. You don't even know where he is. Yes, I do. I looked it up in the paper where his group's playing. Do you want to come with me? Why? I can go on the computer any time I want when you've gone, Carla. Don't you care about me mum marrying stupid Frank Rogers? Well, I do. I'm running away. And they'll never see me again.
Please haven't seen her. What about our Bevan Ron? No sign, but she's only an hour late again. It's not worrying. Frank, I tell her to come straight home from school. She could be at the computer club, kept in anything. No, I phoned and checked. She left at the usual time. She's probably sulking again somewhere. You know she's only doing it to wind us up. Not the first time. There was something about her when she left this morning. Something odd. Don't be getting yourself all worked up imagining things. I'm gonna check her room. Keep calm. I'll try. What? Bit of bad luck there, Maxie. But what's happened? What's going on? Some bad cracks there, mate. But listen, don't be worrying. I've checked all over my house and nothing's wrong. But, but... Frank, here. What's happened? Oh, a few cracks appeared not long after you left. We had a trench dug all weekend, then the scaffolding appeared. There's a surveyor's report inside. Subsidence? Well, yes. Localised, only our house, Matt. How? Well, seemingly the previous owners employed a whole posse of cowboy builders to lay the patio. And? And they managed to fracture an underground drain. And the drains have been seeping into the foundations ever since. No wonder we've got cracks. Have you got in touch with, um, what's her name? Another choice, no, and I haven't been able to trace the builders who laid the patio. What a mess. Well, at least I'm here now. You haven't forgotten. I'm going to Oxford. No, today. Yeah, right so. So, Thomas is all yours for a couple of weeks. I'm going to have to leave quite soon. Margaret's already down there. Oh, God. Go away for four weeks and then come back to this. I'm going to call the police. We're going to go in, sit down, keep calm and do nothing. You said that last time. I'm going to call them now. They're telltale signs, aren't they? Yeah, if the perspex breaks, it means the house is still moving. Looks like our house is falling apart. Just like our marriage. Well, they seem quite confident that they can sort it out. But it might take a few months. And what about the marriage? You know, we can sort it out. It's not too late. Not quite as straightforward as the house, though, is it? I've spoken to the insurance company. Because it's a new fault, nothing to do with the original builders, they should cover the costs. Oh, well, that's one piece of good news. You know, I hadn't thought of anything else but you and Thomas while I've been away. I should finish packing. But Patricia, the decree absolute is through next week. You know, we can call it off before the divorce is final. Not now, Max. Hello. Hiya. You look pleased with yourself. Um, uh, I've got a little surprise for you, that's all. I like surprises. What is it? Oh, uh, OK, you're going to have to close your eyes first. Right, it's all right, now, come with me, trust me. Right, uh, sit down. Hold on a sec. Right, you can open them now. Terry, no, you shouldn't. Oh, it's all right. It's only a cheap one. I thought, if we're going to do the job, well, we might as well do it properly. I mean, it's what people had expect, like Mick said. But you really shouldn't have done this. It's purely a business arrangement. Yeah, but if we're going to convince people, we've got to convince them for all the right reasons. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> I often wondered what this moment would be like. And when I was a little girl in Poland, I never imagined it would be in a kitchen in Liverpool above a hairdresser's with a scouser I was paying to be my husband. Oh, don't, don't spoil it. I mean, uh, well, it isn't every day I get engaged, is it? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Terry. It's lovely, really. Oh, but I'm glad you like it. And uh, don't be afraid to show it off, eh? I mean, because that would be the normal thing to do. All right. And uh, I can't think of a better place than to show it off in the nightclub tonight, eh? No, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't feel it's the right thing to do at all. It does to me. I mean, we've got to convince people with a couple, haven't we? And if we're going to pull this off, we're going to have to do it straight right down the line. And we'll have a good time into the bargain as well. Yes, but I used to work there. So what? You don't anymore. That's the ideal place for me to show my fiancé off. All right. Wow, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I love the place. What college were you at? Christchurch. It's, uh... It's that one over there. Call it the house. 
I was there four years and then I stayed here afterwards. Well, it's a long way from Brookside Gloves. Yeah, and Jimmy Corkill. You want to forget about him, he's an idiot. You better follow me down here and carry on with his stupid games. <laughs> him down here? Why, what's he gonna do? Challenge you to an intellectual debate about nightclub bouncers? <laughs> <laughs> when are you meeting Patricia? Oh, not till tonight. I've got all afternoon prints. Great. Well, how about we'll go get a drink down there, shall we? Okay. Yeah, well, it's very nice. And all the best in getting the pair of you. Thank you. You're not working today? Yeah, I'm waiting for Mike to turn up. I've got a meeting to go to, you know, the kids' sports project I'm involved with. You still enjoying that? Yeah, but uh, today's not so good, though. I took a group of them down the uh, laser game place and there was a bit of trouble. So now I've got to report to the committee about one of the lads. I feel like it's me on trial, not the lad. <laughs> you want to watch yourself, Johnson? You'll be getting the cane. I didn't know, sir. It wasn't me, sir. <laughs> oh, look, I'll see you later, Terry. Hang on a minute. Hang right, on, right, on, All right, boss. How was the happy couple today, then? Uh, great, thanks. Hey, we're coming to the club tonight, and you know, for a bit of a celebration. Hey, why don't you come, Mick, with Marianne? Ah, uh, no, thanks. I'm not in the party mood. To be honest, I think we've split a few problems, you know. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, why don't you come on your own, then? Yeah, it's Andy Sorrows. Oh, yeah. All right, Mike. All right. Uh, Barry, are you in the club later? Yeah, why? Uh, I just wanted a word. Me and Keith have got a way of making you some money. Oh, playing your song again, eh? All right, I'll see you later then, OK? See you see later, Mike. See you later, boys. See ya. It's not too late to put a stop to this, you know. What? All we have to do is tell him it was a misunderstanding and we've decided not to proceed. We could both walk away from this without any damage done. I can't believe you're saying this. Marianne, they're all white in there. <clears throat> This isn't doing the cause any favours. Listen, don't you come the brother with me. You're just a man who used his status to try and make me have sex with him. There's no way you're getting away with this. Well, up to you. I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. You have more to lose than I have by continuing with this. I'm carrying on. Telling the truth. Mr. Weeks. What's happened? I've run away, Dad. I can't live with me mum anymore. I know the feeling. I know what's the problem. She's just not bothered about me. She just goes out with him all the time. I want to live with you, Dad. Oh, hey, love, I'm never at home. We'll have to talk about this with your mum. She doesn't care about anything anymore. Because I'm planning for a wedding. A wedding? Well, your mum's marrying Frank the Plank. Yeah. I'm not living with him, Dad. I want to live with you. I don't care about travelling round. Be great, just you and me. Look, I'm going on again soon, love. What am I gonna do with you? Don't send me back to them, Dad. I want you to look after me. Come on. You better wait in the dressing room until we decide what to do for the best. How's Gavin? All right, I suppose. What does he think about your mum getting married again? It's all right for him. Frank the plank spoils him. And he treats you dead rotten, eh? Yeah, honestly. Come on. Right, I'm off now. Thomas is in his room sulking because he's not coming with me. Do you have to go straight away? Yeah. I've got to concentrate on my career more than ever now. Please don't go. At least stay until we've sorted out our future. It's sorted out, Max. No, it isn't. I know I've been absolutely stupid, but... I'll never let you down again. We can stop this divorce straight away. Please, Patricia. It still isn't too late. I love you. And you still love me? Don't you realize how much you've hurt me, Max? Yes, I know, and I'm really, really sorry. Now you're hurting me. Looks like I've been replaced already. Flowers from a friend. I presume BK is Brian Kennedy. Yes. Thanks for a great night. What does he mean by that? I've got to go, Max. Please, tell me at least you'll think about it whilst you're away. 
can't help thinking about us, can I? We've been married for four years. We still have Thomas. And this Brian Kennedy, just tell me there's nothing between you two. He's a friend when I needed somebody. I'll phone you from Oxford. Look after Thomas. Of course I will. I want to look after both of you. Bye, Max. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. Ready for you now? Do yourself a favour and drop this now. You've got nothing on me. How could I look myself in the mirror if I let you get away with what you tried on me? I'm just going to tell the truth. Well, it's up to you. But don't forget, you're coming to the end of a three-month probationary period. A critical time for you, career-wise. I'm going in there to tell them all about you. And commit professional suicide. over there is where the students eat. And uh, the corner over there is where my room was. And this is Tom Quad, so-called, because the bell in the tower is called Tom. Oh, it's like a different world, isn't it? I always imagined university to be like classrooms and stuff. Nothing like this. I never really appreciated the beauty of it all, but coming back... I mean, this is more you, isn't it? I'm on Liverpool. I don't know, I like Liverpool. It's just things have never really worked out for us up there. I think we've probably all changed too much to try and please each other, and it just didn't work. I mean, I even started wearing a suit to please Mum and Dad, really. I know they stuck by me through the trial, but they had enough problems of their own. But it all worked out OK, didn't it? You know, you were found innocent. So anyone else can look at the house? Nobody seriously. Oh, I'll just be happy living somewhere where I'm not known as Peter Harrison, the rapist. Don't say that. We didn't do it. God knows how many times I've thought about that time. Maybe I did do it. Diana did say no. What? So you're saying, you're saying you did rape her? No, I... I didn't throw her down or force her to do anything. I just didn't respect her. Didn't listen to her. Right at the last minute, she she said no, and I didn't want to hear. I mean, I just assumed you were going to go all the way. There's nothing happening that led me to believe otherwise. She said no, and I ignored her. And yeah. I, I should have stopped, I should have played safe, but I didn't. It's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Just one moment's thought could have prevented all the pain I've caused. Do you not think maybe you're just being a bit hard on yourself because of all the aggro that Jimmy's giving you? It's nothing to what the memory of that night does to me. From now on, when I'm with a woman, I won't know whether what I'm doing is right or wrong. That's the real punishment. to know about you and Patricia. How do you mean? I know you sent her flowers. I don't know whether your involvement is business or social. A bit of both, I suppose. Look, Max, as far as I know, you and Patricia are separated and about to be divorced. I'm not a marriage wrecker. No, 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 I'm not saying you are. I, I just wanted to know where you two were at. To be honest, I don't know. Um, 
What, what if I was to say that I won't see her again until after the divorce? H how's that? All right. Thanks, Brian. All right. The police will trace her. Phone your mum again in case she's heard from her. There's no point. She said she'd phone here if there was any news. Do you want me to ask Ron and Bev again? No, they'd be in touch if they knew anything. Should I make us a cup of tea? Well, I'll do it if you want. No, I'll do it. Keep me occupied. Oh, why'd you have to tell her where I am, Dad? Because she'll be worried to death about you. But you're not going to make me go back there, are you? I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Oh, Dad, you said we could stay with you. No, I didn't. I said we'd talk when I came off stage. She's engaged. That's that, then. Oh, I've got to talk to her, Ali. Be fair. And I'm straight back on stage after the bingo. Can I watch you this time? I suppose so. Stop. Have you had nothing to eat since school? No. We'll have to try and sort out a pie for you or something. Yeah. She's still engaged. Uh, they just want a few more details, love. I'll nip upstairs, make sure Gavin's all right. Okay, thanks. So, what do you want to know? Uh, why, why are the cops back? Have they found her yet? Uh, no, son. Um, they just want some more information off your mum. But she'll be all right, they'll find her. She's stupid. Hey. They want a recent photograph of her. Um, I thought I'd find that one. Um, you know, when we were all together. <laughs> hey, come on. I didn't find her, or she'll just turn up. Yeah, but suppose she did. Suppose mum's taken her. She's with me, Dad. Your dad? Yeah. So, we can't relax on fundraising, and we do need some fresh ideas, so let's think about that. Now, moving on to any other business, and we have to face this problem that we had at the laser game outing last week. Now, I've spoken to the management there and apologized. I'm afraid there won't be any more freebies for quite some time. But I am pleased to report that they'll continue to let us use the place at a discounted rate as long as there's no more trouble. Now, can you promise us that, Mick? Me? Well, you led the group that were responsible for this problem, Gary Salter, to be specific. Listen. Gary did wrong and he knows it. But I'd like you to take into consideration the provocation he was under. With respect, Mick, you haven't known a lad as long as the rest of us. He's had warning after warning and this has to be the final straw. So where's he gonna spend his time if he can't come back to the club? Out on street corners? That's his problem. The lads are far too disruptive influence. This time he has to go. Now it's time to vote. All those in favor of barring Gary Salter from our initiative, please raise your hands. Well, that's fairly conclusive. Unless anyone else has got anything to say, that's the end of the meeting. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Mick, but you are fairly new to this sort of thing, and, well, we've all been through it. You know what? Well, it's all right being idealistic and wanting to get the best out of everyone, but, well, life's just not like that. People let you down, let's face it. You know, I'm not just some young kid who's just steps off the boat, you know. I've been around the block a few times. Hey, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm just saying you can be too nice for your own good. I mean, take Marianne, for example. Go on. Well, we had the uh, internal hearing for this alleged sexual harassment this afternoon. It was thrown at me. I was totally cleared. The company are back in me. It's exactly the way I said it was. I'm sorry again, Mick. Listen, Barry, uh, I found a way of making a bit of extra dosh. Oh, aye, uh, what's that then? Well, you're having a rave night at the club next week, right? Yeah, we're having regular now. So, you can me and Keith video it. Why? Well, to sell copies. Who to? Well, the punters. They'll be queuing up to see themselves on telly. Do you reckon? Yeah, it'll be a winner. I mean, look at the eight man in there. What we do is we video it this week and we flog it to them next week. Well, how much are you going to charge them? Well, we're going to ask eight quid. I mean, we should get that easy. 
All right, do it. I shall. I'll just take half. Hang on, four quid a tape. Uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Four quid for me and four quid for you, that makes eight. But we have to supply the blanks and do the copying. Yeah, and I have to supply the club and the punters take it or leave it. All right, we'll take it. Come in. Don't let them take me back, Dad. Oh, look, Alison, just hang on a minute. Look, I've been trying to contact you, but you've been engaged every time. Well, I've been trying to find her, haven't I? I've had the police out and everything. I'm not going with you. I'm staying with me, Dad, aren't I? Look, you can't stay with me all the time, love. I'm never in one place. Come on, let's get you home, eh? That isn't my home. It is. Can't you say something? This is ridiculous. Well, she's obviously unhappy with things. She's told me about you two getting married. Yeah, yeah. Well, well what if she stays at your mum's for a bit, till things are more settled? Yeah, but it's not solving anything, is it? It's just shelving the problem. You're going to have to come home in the end, you know. <gasps> but I don't want you to marry him. This is my dad. Hey, look, pass that champagne, will you? What's that for? What's for Terry and the Polish one? They get married, aren't they? Go to give them a little treat. Oh, she finally found somebody then. How do you mean? Well, between me and you, she's illegal, isn't she? She's got no work permit or nothing. She's been looking for Mr. Green Card for ages. So it looks like Terry's the man. I hope she's paying him enough. Didn't you know? Of course I did, yeah. Let's just hope it works out, eh? All right. Hello. So, um, what's the toast gonna be? Oh, I know. To a perfect marriage made in heaven. 